watching this video for your sun, moon, rising sign, or Venus sign, um, but the moon's going to resonate the best for you most likely, so if you don't know your moon sign, check in the description box below and there's a link there that'll help you figure out what that is. You can also be watching this if your partner or ex-partner is of this sign, and a good idea is that sometimes when these videos come out right away, they're gonna resonate right away and sometimes they're not. So yes, a personal reading is going to give you the most accurate information, but also sometimes these energies don't click with us because these things haven't happened yet. They're going to happen mid-November or they're gonna happen at the end of November. So keep that in mind too. You could bookmark it, come back to it, or you could just say fuck it all, I don't like this bitch. That's your prerogative. Um, but let's just get started with your video. Hi Capricorn. So we're going to start with singles. This um, is how we're going to start. What's generally the situation in November in regards to love? Sorry, some cards fell on the floor because they want to tell you something important. They're like, okay, here's the deal, Capricorn. You just maybe don't want to put the work into like finding somebody, to keeping somebody, to getting to know somebody. You kind of just don't want to be tied down, right? That's okay. Um, they're like, you know, slowly you're making progress towards other goals, your very earth energy goals, things that are natural to you, work, um, your home, your car, your finances, that kind of a thing, because you haven't felt exactly successful yet. And so maybe because you're not feeling like at the epitome of success, you're like, eh, I want to figure that out first so I can attract somebody a little bit more um, successful as well, because we want to be at our match, right? Okay. So, that's kind of just generally what we're feeling in November. What is it that you want? They're like, you want somebody to focus on, but the people that you've been meeting maybe just so like don't emotionally make you go, oh yeah, worth it. <laughs> so, um, until that happens, you're kind of just like, ugh, work on other stuff. Totally get that. Um, but what is it that you need despite what you want, right? And they're like, you need to start thinking about what you want, really. Um, it's like you know what you want, but you're maybe not trying your hardest to manifest it. And a lot of the reason why is because you might not have seen a lot of success in that, because maybe things take longer, or um, maybe you're doing it wrong, maybe you forget about the law of opposites where you get the opposite thing first before you get what you actually want. And so um, they're like, you know... Let's just, eh, I don't really want to apply myself there. I don't know that, how much I believe in the law of attraction and things like that. So how is it that you're going to get what you want? And they say to think about things in broad terms, not to get too crazy about the details. They say, um, right now, you know, maybe you're kind of right. It's just not the best month for you in regards to attracting this forever person into your life. And a lot of it has to do with our solar plexus, where like we're feeling really confident and things like that. So until you're starting to feel really confident and good about yourself and your achievements and like that you've got your ducks in a row, well, might be a little bit tough. But they're like, the trouble with this though is that like, when are things ever gonna be entirely perfect, right? Probably never. There's always something more to achieve. And so if you're going to um, adapt that mindset or adopt that mindset, that maybe, um, you know, you'll just put it off for far too long. So let's just actually deviate from the questions I had here and see when is going to be the best time for you to try to manifest this. And what they say is start planting seeds now so that they'll grow later. Like you don't have to Put it out there as to when you want it but just start thinking in general terms because they're like okay clearly right now is not the case some of you um recently got a divorce or went through a big breakup and you're like 
Um, I don't know that I believe in happily ever after. I'm trying to remember last month whose reading sounded a lot like this. If it was yours, like snap out of it. Um, cause they're like, yeah, this is becoming habitual. Um, and maybe part of it is because you don't want, cause you want to avoid drama. Understood. But, you know, it's a good idea to start planting seeds. Even if what you want, even if you want it, you don't want to be coupled until like seven years from now, start planting those seeds now so then when they come through, they're amazing. Um, what else did I want to ask? Okay, so what is it that you need to release in the month of November? What they're saying is you need to release this um, focus like that's so, so hard on things that are earth energies because that's not for your highest good. You want to start thinking about what it is that you want and making little wishes, right? So that things can, the universe can kind of just work to bring you something bigger and better than you imagined. So there is hope there um, in regards to that. But you've got to really think about what it is that you want. Now in regards to Capricorn couples, what is your general situation in the month of November? Um, okay, so you're really focused on trying to set good routines and things like that. You know, you're um, making good investments things along those lines and then um, kind of getting things in order so that they pay off later, make your life easier later. But you're maybe not feeling a hundred million percent like emotionally um, excited about it. It's more of a practical energy. So what is it that you should keep doing in regards to your relationship throughout the month of November? And they're like, Defend those decisions, even if your partner kind of whines about it, because they're actually really good ones. Um, you're right. It's going to make things a lot less challenging for you later. So a good example would be like maybe you sacrifice um, together time so that you can go back to school and, um, you know, maybe you quit your job and so you're dependent on them so that you can um, have a better career later, right? Something along those lines. They're like, go with your gut instincts on this. Don't listen to what other people have to tell you. Um you need to do what's going to make you happy because ultimately this is going to pay off really big for you. And then um, the inspiration that you have to make these kinds of decisions is actually divinely guided. Like it's coming from spirit. Um, if I look bitchy, I apologize. My sister dyed my eyebrows, which I actually love um, because now I don't have to pencil them in. But I'm not being bitchy, okay? <laughs> um, so what is it that you need to stop doing? They're like, you know, make sure that you're not coming across selfish and um, make sure that you're not going out of your way to give too much to your partner because your relationship's going to become unbalanced. They say if you're thinking about um, leaving a committed relationship or getting a divorce, they're like, rethink that. It's just a tough patch right now. Um, your general advice... They say the challenge is to be honest with yourself and with your partner about what you're thinking and feeling and then to have those conversations. But they say you should have them. It might be a good idea to kind of write down what you're feeling first before you go and say it so you can express it appropriately and like really get your point across. They say that um, you might be kind of avoiding this and that you do have the tact and strength and um like communication skills to get your message across in a way that isn't hurtful. But it's almost like there's this uh, fear that maybe it's going to block love between the two of you, but actually it kind of opens you up for it. It creates a bond, like it instills trust in each other. So it's actually a really good thing. Um, for everybody else in between, maybe you're in an on again, off again relationship, or maybe it's just not official. What do we have? And they say focus on um, the person right in front of you. They're like, yeah, there's some pain there. Yeah, there's you know some things that you don't really love about this situation, being back and forth, or um, maybe not being 100% committed or an open relationship. They're like, it does kind of hurt your confidence. It doesn't make you feel very good, but this is going to come to an end. How is it going to come to an end? Well, there's two camps here. And that sucks. I wish I could say for all of you, it's going to go the way that you want. Um, but they're saying, they're actually saying, see how she's blindfolded? They're like, we can't tell you that. You can't see that right now because there's two sides to it. 
there's going to be some that are going to um, just like run away from this situation. It's just going to end. And there's others that it's going to get better. So um, a personal reading is going to be the best scenario to really discern what's going on there. Now for singles, what was your lesson in regards to love? And they're saying um, getting rid of your fear and replacing it with insight and awareness. Now the solar plexus chakra and the sacral chakra have been really big over this last month um, for a lot of different signs. So if you ever listen to meditations, one on the solar plexus or the um, sacral chakra is probably going to be a lot of a lot of benefit for, benefit for you. And then we're learning to trust our inner voice and just knowing that it's going to guide us correctly. Our spirit guides, God, the universe, whatever. Um, that's kind of what we're going through here because that's going to help us make the best decisions in regards to attracting a relationship that we want. Now for couples, what do we have? You can set your mind to do, like you can do whatever you set your mind to is basically what it's saying. So if you want to make your relationship work, absolutely you can. Um, if you want to have good open conversations, absolutely you can. Um, but the more challenging aspect to understand that we're learning is that everybody, you know, like everybody has their own truth. Everybody has their own path and their unique challenges. And um, both of these are, my hand is super itchy, my right hand. So I, I want to say for couples, uh, Capricorns, be really, really careful what you're giving out as far as time, money, money, energy, make sure that's balanced because that this is like a loss. Like that's clear sentience right there. Okay, what I was going to tell you is that, um, so these are both purple, right? These are both third eye chakra related. And so really go with your gut instincts here. But what was I, what else was I gonna tell you? Where did I hide those? Okay, here they are. Um, but oh yeah, okay. So both you and your partner have your own perspective, right? And um, neither one of you is wrong, right? You each are living in your own truth. And so you might have different ideas on, you know, the actual truth, but nobody's wrong. So just kind of remember that when you're having these conversations. And then uh, the lesson for everybody in between, again, kind of this purple um, energy with your third eye being, pay attention to spirit. Like if you hear the same songs a lot, if you see the same words a lot, those are signs, right? And so they're saying, You've got to really figure out how to have this courage, the inner strength to face your fear, and then understand also that a lot of the things that you worry about, eh, they may or may not happen, but that worrying is just a waste of energy because it doesn't change the outcome. What's going to happen is going to happen, and worrying definitely isn't going to change it, okay? So just fucking stop. All right. Love you, and best of luck in November. I'm hoping that December is going to be a lot more exciting for you, and see you next time.